So, cockroach poker. So, at, speaking of PAX, we were at PAX East, and I was working in tabletop, walking around, looking at what games walking people... Walking around, looking around. And I saw some people playing this game, and the game looked mad fun. And I said, what the hell game is that? And they said, it's cockroach poker. And they explained it to me a little bit. So then the next day, we're hanging out, playing some games, and I'm like, I can go to the library and see if they got cockroach poker. Cock poker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and see if it's there. And it was not there. So uh, the other day, I was reminded of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that game. So I went on Amazon, and I searched for cockroach poker, you know, the, on the South American Jungle website. And I saw two different ones. So I said, oh, no, should I get the original one or this upgraded looking Cock one? Cock and locker or cocker lock and poker royale. Right. So I go on Board Game Geek and people are commenting like, yeah, there's actually a reason to own both of these. It, you, you know, you don't just buy, you know, it, buying two is not redundant. It's not one of those situations where like, yeah, you buy Carcassonne and then you buy Carcassonne with an expansion. Right. It's like, no, it's actually is different right so i said well they're cheap and tiny perfect for kind of game for me yeah i'll buy both so i bought both and now, yesterday we played both they're pretty good so designed by actually a designer i'd never heard of Some uh French he's from person uh jacques zimet from yep. luxembourg oh, uh, he's made okay. a bunch of other games but i don't think i've played any of them mm -hmm. bombaleo bad bunnies defeason seven mm -hmm. i haven't played any of these so. maybe you check them out but anyway so here's the deal. These oh, are this one has the best name, Elephantastico. So cockroach it's about elephants. So cockroach poker has a lot to do with cockroaches, not a lot to do with poker. <laughs> it's a bluffing game. So basically, the way it works is you put a card out there, right? And you don't tell anyone what the hell it is. You deal out the whole deck. You yep. put, and you, first player puts a card out there, and you aim the card at a specific opponent. So maybe I aim it at Rim. Yep. And he, it's face down, and I say, Rim, this card. Is a cockroach. So I have two choices. It now. might not. There's eight different freaking animals in the deck. There's cockroach, rat, whatever. You yep. know. So I have a choice now. I can either accept the card or refuse the card. But then, before once I decide that, I have to say if I agree with what Scott said it is, or I disagree. Right. So basically, your choices are. Pass the card along and try to. And it's like I don't know if you're bluffing or not. I'm gonna try instead. In, uh, to bluff someone else, right? So if you bluff someone else, you look at the card, now you know what it is, and then you try to give it to someone else and you do the same thing again. Yep. If you think you know, like, I know Scott's lying or I know Scott's not lying, it doesn't matter which it is, is if you are certain uh, or relatively certain that you know what the other person is, has lied or not, if you know what that card is without looking at it, you call them out, and if you are correct, they take the card. And if you're wrong, you take the card. So I might say, Scott, I accept this card. And I believe, I agree that it is a stink bug. And I flip it over. If it is a stink bug, Scott has to take it back. And it goes in front of him. And if Rim thought, so in that case, Rim thought I was not lying. He thought I, you know, was telling the truth. And you were. If I was telling, yeah. And then if I was lying, though, he would have to take the card. Yep. And basically, the best part about this game is you just keep doing this over and over until one person has four bugs of the or four creatures of the same type in front of them. Or one player runs out of cards in their hands. Or someone runs out of cards. And the way you run out of cards is because if you uh, take a card in front of you, you start the next turn. So if you just keep bluffing wrong or getting burned, even if you're, you know, all your creatures don't match up into a set of four, you are playing more cards from your hand than other people and you because you're getting you're on the wrong end of the bluff too much. You're getting figured out. So that's that's just regular cock poker. The, the interesting parts of the game is that you start off and you don't really have much to go on except for reading people psychologically. Yep, and you see in. your hand of cards. Yep. So if I see seven stink bugs, yeah, there's eight, I got there's, real lucky. It's, it's just eight of eight different creatures. for six. I think it's a 64-card deck, right? I think so. Yeah, there's nothing special in regular yeah, cock poker. Yeah, it's just like eight different creatures and there's eight of each. And that's it. So you can count everything. But as the game goes on, there's more and more face up. So like you see seven bats and so and you got three bats in front of you and someone pushes a card at you and says it's a bat. <laughs> Is that the eighth bat? Yep. The so odds little, of that are low, but so on the other hand, so it's a little hand, bit of a not a card counting game because all the information you could have is visible. Yep. Either in your hand or laying in front of people. And it's a bluffing game, but it's not the like try to. It's not like Sheriff of Nottingham. Where, it's, like, not li it's more like Liar's Dice. Because in Sheriff of Nottingham, but without the luck. telling the truth is safe and lying is risky. In this game, it's always risky. 
Yeah. You're trying to get the other person to second guess. So it's one very It doesn't matter whether you're, tr- you're you're lying or telling the truth. If you pass a card at someone, it could come back to you either way. And right? it has an interesting you just politics. Need, you just need to say a thing and push the card in such a way that they will get it wrong or take the risk onto themselves and push it on to push the card. So the real decision is who do you target because they might then retarget it. The card might hit everybody. Right. When there's only one person left to be targeted, they can't retarget it because everyone knows what it is. They have to decide bluff, you know, true or not. The best part about this game is that Scott will pass me a card. He'll be like, it's a cockroach. And I'll be like, I do not accept this card. And I look at it. And it doesn't matter what it is. And I'll pass it to someone else and say, it's a stink bug. Mm -hmm. I saw one card get, every day got passed the maximum number of times, and everyone said it was something different. Mm -hmm. I love that aspect of the game. It's like, what the hell is the the final person supposed to think about this card? Yep. So it's not the most in-depth game. It's definitely just a bluffing game. Yeah, there's not, you, if you, there's no way you can analysis paralysis or anything because it's like you don't have a lot to go on. It's like BS or Liar's Dice. Like it's that level. Liar's Dice, I think it's Liar's Dice without the luck part. Yeah. Because Liar's Dice, you literally roll the dice and could get lucky and get like a whole shit ton of ones in there. Strategically, you can't can't get lucky and, uh, like strategically, the game is pretty random unless people have really obvious tells or are very bad at bluffing. Yep. And it ends up being a little bit of a watch. I couldn't the figure in. out any great heuristics for achieving victory. I had a shockingly effective heuristic. Uh, if someone's gonna lie, you're just reading people, though. It's just reading yeah, people. But it worked a hundred percent of the time until I explained it. And my heuristic was: I'll tell all of you now. It only worked if a card got passed to someone else first before it came to me. Whenever someone looked at a card and then gave it, pu- pushed it to me. If they looked at it for more than four seconds, I assume they were lying. And if they looked at it for less than four seconds, I assume they were telling the truth. And in my experience playing this game twice, that was 100% reliable. All right. So uh, this Cockroach Poker Royale, which is not the same game. It's not an expansion. I believe you mean Cocker Lock and Poker Royale. Right. It is a upgraded and tweaked version of the original game. So it's mostly the same. Except they got rid of a few bugs, which caught gave me a problem because you just got lied and said this is I, a spider. I passed a card to someone and I said spider, and spider <laughs> was not in the royal version. Yep, <laughs> it was like oops. Uh, but basically, they cut out some animals. They put in uh, a crown version. Uh, so there's one rat king, one cockroach king, one you know it said one scorpion. They all king. just count as like the animal of the type, right? But they also you can now say royal instead of saying cockroach or stink bug, and that means. It's an, I'm not telling you what kind of animal it is, but I'm telling you it has a crown, and it's just the same as otherwise. But if you take, if you end up taking a crown in front of you, however it gets there, there's a penalty pile, so you actually can end up getting more cards. Yeah. If you, so it's like you kind of want to pass the crowns and make people take them, right? But if so you take, a, a- if you take a crown, got a royal rat from your hand, and try to pass it off. You could immediately have that in front of you if you, the other person calls you and gets it right. So the Royale version basically adds a swingier, higher risk situation to the game. It also has these two special cards yep. that are basically sort of like foils that you can sort of confuse people with. Like there's one that's always false no matter what you say. Yep. And there's, and there's one that is uh, always... Ro- uh, it's always it's always it's true. No royal. But it's it not is it's never not, royal. Right. So if you say royal, it's always wrong, but you say anything else and it's right. But the mechanics with these cards are if you get caught with it, like if you if you take it and you're wrong about it, you take it into your hand and you gotta play the thing you were wrong about in front of you. If you have it. If you don't have it, daddy two in front of you. Yeah, so you basically there's just a whole bunch of cards that let you hurt people more, but could end up hurting you more because like anytime you p- pass a card to someone in this game. It's like you just want that person to pass the card along. You don't want them to guess because if they guess, it's like they got a, you got a 50-50 shot of that card coming right back in your face. So the game is highly social. Like mm-hmm. it's very easy to just sort of interact and hang out and play at the table. Yeah, it's easy to learn. It doesn't take long. Yep. You can play with two to six people, but I wouldn't recommend two. I think three to three to six is where it's, it's at. It's quick to play. The game goes on for a little while because there's like a lot of this. Well, we, I think it went on for a little while because we had four players. So there's more cards in your yep. hand. I think if you had six players, it might go. Well, it might go. I'm not sure if it go longer or shorter. 
Because on the one hand, it'd be harder for somebody to get four of the one thing in front of them when they're yep. spread out more. But on the other hand, someone could run out of cards in the hand real fast if they keep getting targeted. Yep. And Just it's keep political. targeting that person who's only got a few cards in the hand. Yep, once someone's got three rats, like everyone just starts throwing like, hey, here's a rat. Here's you could a rat. actually, so we could actually, for example, conspire, right? Let's say I start the game and sitting to my, you know, I got Emily and, and Chris next to me and I say, hey, let's make Rim lose. So basically we could set up a thing where I always passed. Oh, no, we couldn't because as soon as you took a card, you would start. Yep. But we could set up a thing to where whenever, whenever possible... So basically, three fourths of the time, the politics of where you direct a card. We always make Rim the. La- we always don't accept the cards and always pass it to Rim last. Because so basically, he's forced to agree or disagree. You don't want to be involved. Yes, like really, you just do not want cards to ever come in front of you. Yeah, there's you really no it. benefit to actually like playing. Your best bet is to sit there and do nothing. Yep. Because there's only one loser. It's not like one person wins, it's one loser, and everyone else wins equally. So just don't be that loser. This, so I would recommend this game, either, either or it both of these It is possible, games. if you're not the first player in the game, it is possible for you to just sit there and do nothing the entire game and then win. I would recommend either or both of these games to anyone who goes to conventions and you need games to like get to the table while you're waiting for everyone to show up, or like in between two serious games, bust this out. This is also a great game to bust out while you're eating dinner or something at a con. Yeah, I don't know if you should buy whether you buy the royal one or the regular one. It's like the royal one does add some complexity. The royal one, in my opinion, but it wasn't necessarily more fun than the regular one. The regular one was just sort of so polished and pure. So I don't really see them like one is better than the other. They seem kind of equal, but slightly different. I would say the royal one is swingier, more random, and there's higher risk in any given hand. Mm. That's the only difference between the two. Yeah, like I'm not like if you, I'm sitting there and I'm about to play and I have to pick one of the two, I guess it's like a coin toss, right? Yeah. And it depends on the group. I think definitely though there is an advantage of if you have people who haven't played it before, you probably I mean if play the in- non royal one first, right? If they're intelligent gamers, you could just go straight to the royal one, no problem. Uh, the, but the regular one is not a baby mode, so it definitely helps to play the regular one first and then play the royal one, it'll be a much easier uh, transition. I would also say, though, that this is an excellent game to bust out for non-gamer friends or for family. Uh, Also great uh, for... You could probably play this with very young people. I imagine probably, like... I don't know, 10-year-olds could play, maybe? I think think 6 to 10-year-olds could play. 6-year-olds would play randomly and have problems, but I think they could do it. Below that would still be trouble, but young kids can play this game. Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, it. but you there's definitely a very young. I'm not sure what does it say on the box for age. It says, let's see, uh, t- t- two to six players, ages eight and up. Community yeah. says six and up. Yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely, especially the non-royal one. Yeah. you can play with young people because, like, you know, how are they going to mess the game up, right? You know, it's it's not hard. <laughs>